Hi, my friends. This is Jay, and this is Jay's Knit and Pearl Jam. <laughs> and as you can see, Jay, what are you up to? Well, you know, I was as I was getting things ready or trying to line up projects for March, you know what I was going to share. I looked at my to-do list. I don't look at it often because it's long. <laughs> Over the years, people have asked me, Jay, do this, Jay, do that, you know. And, you know, I always tell them politely, I'll put it on my to-do list. And I have gotten around to some off, uh, you know, and worked some of the things off my list. But this is one I kind of put off. But all of a sudden, I thought, well, why don't you just give it a try, Jay? Let's just see if we can do this. You know, I've been on YouTube a while now, and I have grown from when I first come on. I am more seasoned. I'm more practical. And I just feel that I can make things clear. Uh, I'm a uh, visual learner, and that's how I share my designs. I don't do it in uh, written patterns. I do it here on my YouTube channel, Jay's Knit and Pearl Jam. So, this on, on my to-do list is Jay. You know, a lot of people have been knitting with me or trying to. Some are or knitters, I'll always get a message, oh, Jay, my, my aunt taught me, or my mother taught me, or my grandmother taught me, but then I stopped, and, you know, life got in the way, oh, now I watch you, and I want so much to start back knitting, and I'm trying to kind of follow you, but maybe you could do one, not like, you know, this is a knit needle, and this is yarn, but just break it down, and, uh, you know, so that us knitters who Put it down for a while, but now want to pick it up. Or if you're crochet and you know you knit enough and you want to cross over more, you know, because I crochet, you know, knitting's my day job, crocheting's my night job. <laughs> so here we go. The name of this, I'm gonna call this uh, video, or it's it's gonna be in small parts. I hope. This is how I'm gonna try to do it. This is called Jay's Knit. Simple step, simple steps for simple sweaters. Jay's knit simple steps for simple sweaters because that's how I taught myself step by step by step. I didn't have a chance to go to knit shops only years later, you know, after I was, you know, some time, you know. But I just learned by looking and deconstructing and learning and learning. There was no computers. There was no nothing, people. Just books from the library. <laughs> or uh, we used to also get uh, little projects in the newspaper. They had a little craft section, a lot of newspapers, a lot of cities all over the country. You always had a little craft section, and they would share with you, you know, different things. Most of it was crochet, though. So... All right, I don't want to dally. I want to get on this. This is step one. I'm going to do it in steps to keep me. I, I do better if I say steps and then follow that protocol. For step one, something as simple as pick your knit, knitting needle size. Pick your knitting needle size. That's the first thing you want to do. Now, if we were following a pattern, the pattern would tell you what size or they recommend. I don't produce patterns. What I produce is for you is, like you say, visual learning. The first thing you need to know is what fits my hand, what makes my hand feel good. Uh, if I have any um, physical problems, uh, do you have arthritis in your in your back? Do you have uh, arthritis in your shoulder? Maybe you had a, a, a one of those stiff shoulders at at a time. You got to be careful. Maybe you had carpal tunnel at one time. You got to be careful. Uh, maybe you have arthritis in your joints and things like that. So, just from I'm not affiliated with these bamboo needles. These are by Clover Takumi's Clover Bamboo Needles. But if you do have limitations, try switching from whatever you may have used in the past or learned on to these bamboo needles. They are lightweight. They're easy on the joints. They don't wear your shoulders and arms out. They don't, you don't even have to keep your neck bent over so from the pull of, of other needles, you know, trying to keep the stitch on the needle, keeping them from sliding off. So, and then plus, you can get them at most any place, any big 
box store or online. More bang for your bucks. <laughs> so, the first thing, pick a needle. And this is just what I mean. For your hands and what you and the kind of yarn you like, I'm going to suggest either a number 7, 8, or 9. There's three needle sizes I, I gave you. No matter U.S., number 7, number 8, or number 9. And we'll talk about the appropriate yarn a little later. And the reason I picked these numbers out, uh, like I said, you get the feel of, of certain needles. And uh, and if it, once you get the feel of and you and it doesn't cause any problems, then why not just knit with those needles? I if you use a pattern, you got to change your needles, you got to change all everything. Well, when I taught myself, I didn't have all that information. There was no computers, people back in the day. There were just pictures from the library or some from a book. So I learned how to just stay with one size needle and yarn. For certain things then I you could switch up but what I'm going to share with you will work if you work it if you are following me whether you pick a number seven whether you want to work with a number eight when I first came on YouTube my favorite needle was number eight the only reason I changed was because I got fluffier <laughs> number nines when I knit with those they feel better and they give me nice ease and it looks nicer on my body but when I first came on I did most of the lot of the projects in US number eight. So this is what you'll have. Let's not dally. This is what you'll have. Pick a size that you think that you would like working with. If you like smaller yarn than our regular number medium weight, which I will get into, then you would go with maybe a seven. Maybe a seven or an eight. If you like the medium size yarn that I use and like I said, we'll get into that. You will go from an 8, either an 8 or a 9. I'm using 9s now because I'm fluffier. So, when you go to your store or you order, all right, now what do I order, Jay? Glad you asked. If you're going to knit with me, I'm going to show you how to knit uh, in a timely manner to make your time more, um, to get just more work done in the time. And uh, learn to multitask. To start out, you will need in in my bamboo needles. When I'm knitting my sweaters, I have two needles number nine. These are 36 inches in length. You know, in length. If you can, if you're a fluffier person, or just a larger, taller person. You may want to have a 48 inches in length. You know, you may have to order those. A lot of times you can't find them in the store, but you can order them. So, a 936 or a 948. These are circular needles. I've got this one in the sweater, so. But you can see that I have two packs. You need to have two packs. And I'm going to show you how to knit more proficient and get a lot more done by working more needles and sitting around waiting on another needle people the needles are inexpensive because you can use coupons so two one will be for the front one will be for the back of the sweater we will knit these sweater the sweaters that this whole series that I'm gonna do connecting all these dots we're gonna do in uh, a the two a two-piece sweater because it's easier to show someone who's just getting started how to work the two-piece than a large piece of fabric flipping back and forth, turning, putting it arms, and it's just, trust me, go with me. <laughs> so, that's the first thing you're going to, you're going to write this down so when you go to the store or order online, you know what you're ordering. Whether it's in seven, or number eight, or number nine. Okay, we'll go over the difference. Just pick a size needle that you like, that you like the feel of it. You like it in your hands. You try. If you don't have, then you got to try something. Or either if you are fluffy size, like I am, you know, 1X to 2X, something like that, or large, nines. All right. 
The next needle you will need is for whenever we need to add a collar or once we start separating the front of the sweater, you have a neckline. Well, you have to have one that 36 inch would be too large to work your neckline in, you know, when we're knitting. You have to drop down to a 9, 8, or 7, number 24 in length. Some will say 29. You can get a 29 or 24. If you don't have a 24 right on hand, then you might be, you probably will be able to use a 29. 29 used to be the standard, but now a lot of places carry 24s. 24 in inches in length. Number 9, you need at least one of these. These are good to have for later on. We're going to be working a lot of cows. These are great. So, if you have coupons, if you want to buy more than one, feel free. Go ahead and say, yeah, I'm going to be ahead of the game. I'm going to get two of those too. But we, you only need one for the sweater. Next thing, once we separate the front of the sweater, remember we have two pieces. The back, I'll come back to. Right now, we're just talking about what we need to get started. You will need some straight needles. You could have, a lot of times, I use a 924s for each front. If you like circular needles, you can just spin your coupons on more circular needles, 924 4s in length, to work each front. So each front will have a 924. That's perfectly fine, and sometimes I do that. But I'm just going over so that you will know, too, if you already have some of these needles. But you do need some needles, and these are just plain bamboo straight. These are the same size, number 9. Does that make sense? Okay. You'll have to have a set for the left front. You'll have a set for the right front. Does that make sense? See? See, you can just, hey, copy those coupons. Look for those coupons. <laughs> All right, now, on the sweater, if we decide to add sleeves, longer sleeves than just a little simple sleeve or a vest style, then you will need to go down and have at least, but I suggest, and see I don't have two, I should have brought two over here. I suggest a number 8 size 16. Number 8 needles size 16. And I would go ahead and get two of those too. Because they always come in handy for sleeves. This is the only time I go down from the size of the body of the sweater. This is all the body. Here are the sleeves if I'm going to add sleeves. I need a number 8 going down in size 16 inches to make a smaller circumference for a sleeve. And then once we get down towards the wrist, you will need some, uh, you, uh, some number 8 double pointed needles in order to finish the sleeve with the cuff of the sleeve. So here's some here. And uh, they always usually they come with five in the in the little pack, but you will need once we get down to the get the sweater down close enough to the wrist or down in here, then this becomes a little too hard to work. Then we, we can always switch to our uh, number eight double pointed needles. Okay, nothing scary about them. They are a necessity to learn how to use them, whether you use them a lot or not. Makes sense. So look at what we have already. Step one was to just pick a needle that you like. Just pick a needle that feels good. Pick a needle size that you really like working with. And for me, it's a number nine. Seven, eight, or nines would be good to get started with. And here they are. All right, now let's talk about step number two. I'm going to come back and we'll talk about the yarns for whichever needle you pick, whichever needle size you pick. But what do you think of that? Simple. You don't have to, you'll just. You'll just be right, you'll just be ready to flow. Every time you get an idea for a sweater, once you start <laughs> once you start getting coupons, I just buy needles all the time. I just don't understand people talking about that. Well, I got to get two needles. I got what? <laughs> I must have twenty of every size needle there is. Alright. 
And now you don't have to do that. I'm just kind of messing with you. All right, back in just a minute so we can talk about the yarn. All right, so now step two. You've decided on a needle size. You know the one that you're going to order all your needles and you're going to look through your stash and see if you have those needles. Next thing, step two, is now pick a yarn for your needle size. If we were using a pattern or something, then they would give you some suggestions of yarns and, and different things, uh, you know, and of course the, the needle for that yarn and all of that. Well, we're doing our own design, so you have a needle now. Now you can pick yarn that, that will be appropriate for your needle size. The needle you've picked out as the one, Jay, I'm good. This is the one I want to, to knit my sweaters on. Now, let's just talk. I use regular number four yarns, but you can use any quality of yarn that you want. I just use standard, uh, you know, acrylic yarn. But this system works on any yarn. You can get yarn from a, a particular yarn dye or or a particular, um, you know, yarn box, uh, surprises, whatever. But once you, you know, decide on your needle size, you want the appropriate yarn because that's what we're going to gauge. We will gauge after this section. All right, so let's just start with the small yarn. All right, first of all, if you want a, if you're going to use a seven or number eight and you like to use smaller yarn than your standard number four, then the next size down in the little window is like a DK light or a number three. Does that make sense? Now, I've just pulled out some. These are just some baby yarns that I have because I don't use a lot in my sweaters. Now, let's, let's talk a minute. If you're a small size, if you're small, medium, maybe even large, you know, and you want to use a small needle, say a number seven or an eight, then of course, you know, it's going to take more stitches and, um, you know, you're going to be working smaller, you know, just smaller stitches. And so uh, just know that when you pick a smaller yarn. If you're a larger size, fluffier like me, and uh, you're over large, 1X, 2X, 3X, all right, you, I would not use this number or a small needle because it would take so long to make the sweater. You just have to just reason with yourself, people. Just come together <laughs> and just think about things before you just grab up a yarn. And that's why a lot of patterns didn't work for me. Because the yarn they use or the needle size didn't work for my body. Does that make sense? Maybe that's what I want to say without, you know, talking against anything or patterns or books, anything. I'm just telling you my life's journey. When I first, you know, was reading patterns and bought, and bought all the books and, you know, they usually pick small yarn or yarns that did not, that it just took so long to make a project for my size because they probably wasn't my size. <laughs> so when I started doing doing my own designing and I decided to try to make things for my size. Does that make sense? So for me, number three for a sweater would be take too many uh, skeins, take, it would take too, many, too long and too many stitches and it would just wear my hands out to work on smaller needles for my size but here are some look on the window in the little window like I said number three will be good and usually it will tell you they call for six but remember I would not I would always go either sevens eights or nines if you want to uh, knit these sweaters with me and unless you change drastically from this size yarn or needles, then you don't have, all of these yarns will use the same numbers. It's no different than when I first start watching YouTube and, and I ran across people that knit socks. I was just amazed. They just, they know their numbers. I cast on 60 stitches. I cast on, they know their needle size. Now I use a two point something. I'm like, wow. And I says, that's just how I make sweaters. There's no difference. 
All right, so here's some old Isaac Misrahi and and it's a let's see, I'm gonna look. I believe it's a number. Yeah, it's a number three. Let's see my glasses. Let's see what needle they call for. Even though we're gonna use, I can't even see. I, it's it's so small I can't see it. But we're gonna use either a seven or an eight on this yarn to do your sweater to do our our uh, swatching in. Okay. Here is just some really inexpensive DK colors that I got at Joanne's. You know, that's you pick your own quality of yarns, but you just want to make sure it's something that will kind of work with your needle. All right, use a lot of this number three calls for six, but we're going to gauge it at using a number seven. All right, this number three, number seven, you and some are are lofty or thick enough that you could gauge it as a number eight. But does that make sense? Okay, now for us bigger girls, all right, I use regular number four yarns because that's what I've always used. And um, uh, here is some uh, some of Joanne's basic stitch. This kind of took the place of Premier yarn. Um, I don't have any Premier out, but that's one of my favorite yarns. Okay, and uh, let's see if they tell you it's a number four. Oh, yeah, they call for an eight. But now I gauge it with a number nine. Same yarn that I would have worked in my number eight back when I was smaller. Now I'm just going to gauge it up one needle size. And it works. Okay, works just fine. So there's some. Of course, your standard bearer is Karen Simply Saw. Everything that I, every yarn that I might want to try, and I'm not, if I'm not sure, have not used it before, I can kind of gauge it with this yarn. I can kind of look at this yarn and see how it looks. Even this one, I can compare it. For instance, these are number four. But look at this one. Here's Shauna Ball, and they call this a number four. Does that make sense? But once I compare it, See, I would not want to use the shawl in, shawl in a ball number in the number four. It's much thinner. So this would not be one that I would use with my number nine needles, even though it's a number four. You have to have a little, you have to just think a little when you do pick out your yarn. But if you stay in the safe yarns, pretty much, even if it's hand dyed, you might find a great person or a company that you like their yarn, the weight of it then by all means you can use that here is um of course vanna uh line brand vanna's choice okay this is one of my favorite yarns to use when i did all my sweaters it they gauge it at a, with the number nine so it always works up fine for me when i want a really cold weather sweater with long sleeves and a pretty you know collar or something I know that I will get good results with this yarn. That's why it became my favorite. The others are a little thinner. So it would be a little, it wouldn't be like heavyweight sweaters. They would be like the sweaters we're going to make in this series of, uh, of the sweaters I'm going to do. Here's Touch of Alpaca number four. And they, now for instance, look at this. This is a number four. This is uh, Lions Brand Touch of Alpaca. And um, they use a seven to gauge this. Well, I know immediately then I would just either go seven or eight, depending on whichever needle that I pick that's right for you. Seven or the eight or the nine. I could, you could use any of these. Once we do our little gauge swatch, you will know how many stitches it will take to make this yarn on the needle that you pick fit your body does that make sense okay and then of course lines brand heart I just pulled all of these but any number fours any number four weight except like I say you have to have a little wisdom you know that would be too small you can just you have something to to put it up against to say oh no that's not gonna work does that make sense okay so now here are some yarns I just pulled these out. I was at Hobby Lobby the other week and I wanted to try this soft and sleek. Uh, they don't ever tell their yarns, but they use a number eight. But I'm going to gauge it with a number nine because I'm a little fluffier than this person here. <laughs> so, there we go. There's That's just how to just 
get your yarns just look at what needle you pick and find a good yarn that will fit that needle once you do that then you're going to work all these sweaters in the same category of yarn with the same needle size and you're going to have the same good results all every time so the next step that was step two pick your yarn for your needle size that you've already decided on the needle now you're picking yarn all right now we need to move to ooh, the scary part step three will be find your numbers <sighs> so i'll clear this up and be back in a minute all right now we're into step three find your numbers find your numbers <laughs> Okay, so which is going to call for some counting or a gauge or some measurement or something. Now, when I first came on, like I said, I didn't learn in a knit shop. I just had to learn. And one day I came up with making myself a real-time, like, gauge tape. I just sat and cast on a bunch of stitches and made this long tape where I knit, maybe using a number eight for a while, maybe three or four inches, and then I switched to a number nine needle. Um, you and knit three or four inches or whatever just so that I would because those were the yarns that I picked for the needles that I liked or that worked best for me so you're going to take the needle that you have picked out either number seven number eight or the nine you're going to pick go ahead and take some of the yarn that you're going to use for your sweater that, you know, a color that you've liked, that you like, and you've picked out, and you're going to knit a little swatch. You're going to have to have something to kind of see how many stitches do you get to the inch. I used to count because sometimes I don't know. If, I don't know if it's because I was insecure about the, about my body size or whatever, and uh, so I started with the counting me method where I would put a mark and then I lay certain part of this tape on my body and put another mark and then I'd sit and count stitches to see how many stitches would it take to fill up a certain part of my body you know maybe from my waist to my belly button so that's what I'm going to show you now but now you know I've been knitting so long and I've used the same needle and the same weight of yarn I'm pretty I'm pretty secure now that that we can just simply go try to do it in a shortcut method go back to the gauge this is a gauge ruler this is what if you went to a knit shop you know what a gate you know this is what they would have taught you how to gauge your um, stitches or you can just simply use a measuring tape if you don't have one you don't have to have all this high-end stuff people you can just take a measuring tape or a ruler you knit up a swatch of your fabric about you know four inches by four inches or something like that you just throw in some stitches knit you know knit and purl knit and purl you know until you have a swatch big enough to measure to see what your real gauge is how many stitches do you get to to an inch for my simple sweaters that's all I need I don't need to know how many rows and all that I just need to know how many because my knitting like I say is very um, I just you know they're they're just they're not high it's not high in knitting with a lot of increases and decreases just very simple but it's the it's I don't know it's the joy of doing it <laughs> so for one inch I lay the ruler here or whatever and I count one two three four I always get four stitches to the inch no matter what I <laughs> so what I would do I would take that and I'd write that down four stitches four actual stitches to each inch now you're going to go and you need a tape and you need a mirror to go to the mirror to go to your body and I'm going to back out now what you, you want to know how many inches do you need for certain parts of your body as I said before, just like in crocheting, you may be larger in the bust, so you can go from under one arm across to the center cleavage of your bust line. Have on a good bra, and if that's where you're the largest, and write down how many inches does it take to go from up under the arm, from your side, to the center of the body. 
I'm doing the midriff, so I'd do down here, just like I did on the crocheting piece, and I'd go to my belly button. Now, on this pillow body, this is your body, this is my body, but on this pillow body, it there's only nine inches from the side seam to my belly button. So, what I would do, let's see if I'm on camera without moving everything. Yeah, I think that'll be fine. All right, I had four stitches, four stitches to the inch. I have nine inches on my pillow body, so four times nine is 36. Well, that's just this half here. Well, if I have 36 from here to here, well, then I can automatically go ahead and add 36 from here to here, right? Okay, that gives me 72 stitches. Now, on the bus, you might be larger and you have different numbers. But you would simply do the same thing. Whatever you got on this side, you just add it on this side. All right, 72. Now, if that number is not divisible by 4, either way, we're going to round the number up to the next number divisible by 4 to give positive ease. 72 is divisible by 4, but I found, after years of doing this, and like I said, when I counted, it, it, the numbers were a little different. So that's when I started rounding up to get my numbers compatible because we don't have a, an actual pattern that we're following line by line or somebody has written out for us. We are designing, and we have to get our design into our sweater. So, the next number up from 72 is 76. So, 76 becomes my number of stitches for this pillow body going across, 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 across. It will be 76. My old number, when I, before Jay got fluffier, <laughs> remember my number nines used to be 96. That means 96 going across, across, across. That's after I had rounded everything up to a number divisible by 4. Well, guess what? Not only do I get 76 on the front, but automatically I get 76 stitches for this pillow body on the back. Or whatever number you get for the front, you will automatically get it for the back of the sweater. Two pieces, same number. Now... You may not remember this, but on the sweater I'm going to show you, I'll show you a little part of the sweater. Um, but we're going to do a one by one ribbing. We're going to start with one by one ribbing, and when you're working flat, and you're going to do the one by one, we need an odd number. Well, 76 has been rounded up. I've rounded that number up so it's nice and even. It's 76, but I'm going to add one more stitch when I'm casting on to make my total cast on number for this pillow body, 77. On my real sweater, Jay had to move up her numbers because she's gotten fluffier over the years from when I started way back in 2013, I think, when it's when I first started, uh, when I got on YouTube. So instead of 96 now, I'm at 104 stitches. <laughs> I had to round it up. It might have been 102 or something, or 100 and, 101. Anyway, I rounded it up to the next number, which landed me on 104 stitches. So that simply means for my sweaters, I get 104 for the front, and another 104 stitches for the back of the sweater. Hence, two separate um, circular needles, so I can I can cast on for both front and back, and not have to wait for one or the other. And uh, uh, and you will too. Now, does that make sense? Do you think you can do that? You think you can just simply knit up a swatch? You got to look, people. There's no way around it now. But let me just give you this. If you've been knitting with me, and you've knitted the sweaters with me, and you've used a number nine uh, on sweaters or... Or, you're, or you've used number 8 and you like that size, you can use the same number as long as you stay in that same category of yarn that you knitted the sweater, that you knitted the other sweaters. See how easy that is? You don't. You can just like, oh, Jay, I don't have to swatch anymore. I'm going to stay with the, that yarn. I like that particular. I like Premier yarn. So I'm just going to use that and use my same number I, I did the last sweater. Bingo. 
but for someone crossing over or new, I wanted you to understand how to get it. But the main thing, once you get a number, round that number up. It gives positive ease and it makes my numbers compatible for us to design and add a lace feature, a cable feature, whatever we want to add to our sweater. All right, I'm going to clear this up. I'm going to come back and give you just a little glimpse of the sweater, but I'm not going to add it on this tape. I'm going to give you a glimpse of the sweater because the next portion, the next step is step four. This was step three. Find your numbers. Okay. Step four will be, uh, let's see. Oh, step four will be pick a stitch, but I've already picked out of a stitch out of the stitch books, out of the stitch book that I reviewed. Uh, you know, pick a stitch and we're going to hmm. I think you, let's see pick a stitch I was going to add something on to this oh we'll just make our working formula we'll go into that that's what we'll do so that will be step four it won't be on this tape but I'm going to come back in just a minute and show you a little glimpse like a tease of the sweater uh that we're going to actually knit together using everything that I've shared on this part of the tape of this video. All right, back in just a minute. Okay, so now here's just a little tease, a little little pop of what we're going to be knitting this sweater. Here it is in this amazing blue that I had started. And then, the real time was going to be in this amazing pretty green that was the Hobby Lobby, uh, soft and sleek, that I found this color called Green Apple, Apple Green, one of them. So I wanted to just give you a little, little preview. There's a design going up the front. There's a whole lace section that's so pretty. Let's see, can I lift it up? There's a pretty lace right up the front. Because this sweater will be worn over something, a pretty camisole or something, people. You wouldn't wear it just with your bare skin. You're going to have something under it. So there's that. It has, let's see if I can show it on this one. We will be starting. It's the back. Let's turn it here. Give a look. See if I can show a little bit of this one. Here it is in that apple green or green apple, one of whatever their name. And you can see that we are going to be working the ribbing. Of course, I'm going to show you uh, overview when we actually start knitting. I just wanted to give you a taste to get you excited. You can see we have a nice stitch to match on each front. Then a center section, which as we work up, will eventually become the neck opening, as on this one. And we'll do a little decreasing, just simple decreasing. And then we knit up to the shoulders. And of course, at the same time we're knitting this, you'll be knitting the back. Because you're going to have more than one needle. You're going to cast on the front, on the front needle and the back. And this is one where I do the pickup and put the little extra for the sleeve. So that at the end, for those that are in really warm weather, you will be able to just put a little band on the sleeve and voila, you won't have to worry about adding sleeves. But for us in cold weather, we will pick up stitches and then continue the sleeve to make it a long sleeve with cuffs and everything. So you will have an option. So I wanted to give you just a little sneak preview so that you can go ahead and decide on the yarn that you want to use for your sweater. If you're new, I've walked you through the steps. If you have knitted with me, you're all excited because you don't have to worry about swatching. You can just pick out number. You can just use the numbers that you've used on your other sweaters. But let me just give you this little tip. Even if you've knitted with me and you go, oh, Jay, I've been on a diet. <sighs> Oh, and it's working, Jay. Okay. So I may have lost a little bit. So my number might be a little loose on me. Do I have to start over? No. All you have to do is take four stitches off that 
off your cast on number. You know, your original cast on number. That, that original number that you round it up. Take four stitches off. That automatically means you get four stitches off the back too. That becomes your new number. Try that. See, it doesn't take much to change uh, the fit of the sweater. Four stitches on the front, off the front, four stitches off the back. Maybe you're like me. Ooh, I kind of went up a little bit, Jay. So, you know, it was already fitting real good, but it might be a little tight. Do I have to start over with all the numbers in the sweater? No, you just add four stitches. Since we round our numbers up to a number divisible by four for positive ease, you simply add four more stitches. Four more stitches to the front needle, four stitches to the back. Voila! You have built in more positive ease, and you're going to have, like, oh my gosh, I didn't have to start over. Does that make sense? Is this something you think you might like to give it a try? Because I'm going to be working... So I, I just want to knit. I have been faithful and trying to do bring in some crochet things. And, you know, I like to crochet, but my love is knit. <laughs> I am just feel like I'm just, oh, this, if I don't knit soon, <laughs> I'm just going to go stir crazy. So this is what I started. And I thought I would bring you along on the journey. So this will be where we'll start. This will be step four on the next tape. That step four is to pick a stitch, which I'm going to show you the stitch I've picked, show you where I got the stitch from, okay? And then I'm going to show you how to write up the formula. You know, I work from a working formula or a little schematic or something that's visible for you to actually, you know, see, to look at. I'll probably type up an information sheet, the stitch, and just, you know, just important information and then we will stitch so again I want to thank you I hope you give this a try and I hope that you will join me on this journey this is Jay's Knit Simple Steps for Simple Sweaters and this will be this will be part one this will be the first three steps to get ready I will come back in another few in you know in just a few you know I don't waste much time I don't have too much time between things <laughs> I'll come back in a few days and we'll start with step four pick a stitch and we'll make our formula so I hope you get busy I hope you tell your friends I hope you uh, tell new other people that you know want to knit if you have a group why don't y'all do it as a group project? I would love to have someone who's in a, maybe your church, maybe you have like five or six ladies in your church group and, and they they knit, but maybe they've never stepped out to knit a sweater. Well, you simply take and show them what I've done. If y'all have, a, somebody has a laptop there or something, y'all can watch the video. Uh, you can help them get prepared and get ready and to knit along with us. If you have uh, someone that you knit with at work, this will be great. You can knit together. I'm telling you, knitting is fun with if you have someone to knit with. <laughs> so, I hope you just think about it and just step right in. And if you've been knitting with me, all the people, I thank you so much. All the beautiful, all the beautiful work and the pictures I've received. Anything you knit off my uh, from my site. From my designs, I would love to have pictures. As you know, I make a friendship album. And we just finished one, and it is just amazing. How pretty. Oh, my gosh. It just turned out so beautiful. And I thank each and every one. They are all bright, shining stars. <laughs> so, until uh, until next week or the next part, part two, this is Jay. I'll see you.